in this short video, I'm going to show you how you can use Google Sheets to do many project management tasks that you might not have realized it could do. To get started, we're going to set up a basic sheet and I'm gonna walk you through the process of configuring it so that it makes things a little easier to handle. And so you see here we have a column for our tasks, the start date, end date, a status column, who's gonna do the task, uh, if any files are going to be attached, and then what the description will be. So I know I just want plain text in this task, but I do want people to fill out the date in a very particular way. And so I need to format this column, these two columns here, so that people can pick a date. So to do that, we're going to click on data and then data validation. From here, it's going to give you a little flyout window on the right side, and we're going to click Add Rule. Next, we want to pick the type of validation that we need. In this case, we want to pick a valid date. And we want to reject the input if somebody tries to put in something different. In this case, we're applying it only to Sheet 2 to Cell B2, so this selected cell in this sheet. I want it to be for that whole column. So I'm going to do colon B. And that's going to do it for the entire column. Let's click Done. And I also want to do this for column C. Click Add Rule. Again, I'm going to pick is valid date. Make sure that that's for the whole column. And reject the input. Now you'll notice the Google is smart enough to consolidate these two rules together. And when I hover over the rule, you can see on the left side here where the B and C column both have a green highlight showing that that's where the rule has been applied. So let's take a look what this rule actually does. When we double click, it's going to give us this great drop down and we can navigate quickly between months within the calendar. But I also have a status column, and I want to use those nice color-coded chips. And so I'm going to do another rule here, and I'm going to do drop down. And in this case, I want to have not started in progress. I have a few others that I want to add, so I'm going to click add another item. And in this case, I'm going to say stuck and completed. Now all of these are currently going to be gray. The only one I want gray is not started. For in progress, I want to have that be blue. For stuck, I want that to be yellow. And for completed, I want that to be green. Again, I need to make sure that I use colon D to make sure that I apply this to the entire column. And when I click advanced options, I want to reject the input so that nobody can add anything different in here. I can also choose the display type. I can do the arrow, which is kind of the traditional drop down that you may have seen previously, or plain text, but I'm gonna pick chip. I think chip looks nice here. It gives us a quick, easy way to reference what's going on. So again, when we click it, and maybe we click in progress, you can see how that looks. For person assigned, the nice thing is that if you at mention somebody, they will show up here. So if I do at Keith Medlin, boom. My chip is filled in. If you hover over the chip, let's just click off it. If you hover over the chip, you'll see some additional information. You can do the same thing with files. So if I wanted to include maybe a project charter file here, I could do at project charter. And I can pick from my files and set that up. And then finally, I can type anything I want to into the description which as you can see, I probably want this to wrap, don't I? So I can click on that, click a big range here, and actually we'll split the whole column, and we'll just pick this for text wrapping, and drag that out. So, we now have our setup mostly done. The other thing we probably want to do is drag our lock bars. So if we want to lock in the header and then lock in the task, we can just drag those bars from 
the upper left corner. So drag that over to A. And drag that down. Perfect. There we go. So we know that's locked in. So no matter where we go, we'll always see that part of our sheet. Here's an example of our project that's already been filled out. And what I want to show you here is how you can use the timeline view. So what we're going to do is go to the insert menu and then we're going to select timeline. This is going to allow us to create a timeline. It's going to select everything by default where there is data, but you can tweak this information here. In this case, I'll accept the default information and click OK. Now you can see we have this Gantt chart but it's a little more powerful than just your normal Gantt chart. In this case, you can see that we've got a couple of things going on where you see our start date and our end date, and that's determining the length of the task. We're also seeing the card title be the task. We also have an optional status for the card color to be set by status. We can choose a card detail column, so if we wanted to say description, we could. That would probably get a little complicated if we had a long description. So I'm going to say no option here. And then we can choose how to group the columns. And right now, they're not grouped by anything, but maybe I want to group them by person assigned so that I can see when people need to do which tasks. So here you can see I have some tasks, Lisa has some tasks, and if I want to click on a task, I can take a look at it. So in this case, I'm going to click on user acceptance te testing. And on the right side, I have my card details. Now here you can see that I have all of the information from the spreadsheet, and I can continue to click on these cards to get additional information. If I ever want to edit a task, all I need to do is click edit data and I can come back in here and say well you know what maybe the user acceptance testing doesn't need to go quite that long and we can finish that out on the sixth okay notice that I now have a timeline view here and my changes are reflected right within this section I also have options to change how everything is viewed so for example if I wanted to see things in days, I could, or even maybe quarters. In the default, it'll be set to year, which gives you this kind of monthly view. You can zoom in. And if you ever need to show or hide the settings, you can always click the settings button here. And if you get zoomed too far away from your home date, you can always click today and it will take you back to whatever today's date is. And again, when you click edit date, it's going to bring you back to your actual data source with the row highlighted for the card that you were working on. So there you go. Some additional tips and tricks to help you use Google Sheets to manage your projects.